is a big one near. California fault line is moving. It's creeping. And scientists claim it could be bad. Of course, all this activity actually began July 4th and 5th with the Ridgecrest earthquakes. And ever since then, the whole area and moving up towards central and even northern California, northern west coast Cascadia Arc has been shaken by Ridgecrest. This is to be expected. That's what happened 20 years ago. The last time we had a 7.1 in California was at Ridgecrest and Ridgecrest jolted the nearby earth, the fault zones at that time as well. We also have quake swarms in the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano area and we have, as we had 20 years ago, quake swarms happening in Yellowstone as well. Exactly as what happened 20 years ago with the Ridgecrest 7.1 earthquake. That's what's happening now. The thing is that now, this time, they've noticed that a fault line has started to creep. The largest fault line in California is San Andreas and the second largest is the Garlic Fault. That's the one that has started to creep. And according to Andrea Bendix, this is on Science Alert, at any moment, the geologists say, an earthquake of magnitude 6.7 or higher could ripple through California, leading infrastructure to topple, power to shut off, and buildings to collapse. Scientists expect to experience a big one in their lifetimes, even though they're not sure when or where. So when researchers detected strange seismic activity along a major California fault line this week, it prompted a familiar question, is a big one coming? But we also have to remind ourselves that Ridgecrest is not just a regular earthquake. It happened in a volcanic field. There's actual magma underneath there. That's why they have a geothermal plant there, one of the biggest in the country. It's servicing 270,000 families. And uh, that's what they're tapping into, the heat from that magma source in order to turn it into electricity for the people that they're servicing. So it's not just a regular area. It's a volcanic area. It's a volcanic field, the Coso volcanic field. Now, last Thursday, scientists released a study warning that the garlic fault, which runs through the Mojave Desert in Southern California, is joining San Andreas perpendicularly to the west. It has been moving for the first time on record. The fault is capable of producing a magnitude 8 earthquake, though it's currently moving at a slow, continuous pace. It's a process known as creeping. The reason for this sudden change, according to the study, was the destabilization caused by the Ridgecrest earthquakes in July. Those quakes, the July 4th 6.4 magnitude, and followed by the 7.1 magnitude quake the next day, originated along two other faults, other fault lines nearby. It wasn't the same fault that moved. Now, uh, Richard Allen, the director of the Seismological, Seismological Laboratory, University of California, Berkeley, said, we know that faults talk to one another. The two Ridgecrest earthquakes were fairly large magnitude earthquakes, and they're fairly close to the Garlic Fault. So the change that they caused in the stress fields would obviously have an impact. It could trigger an earthquake nearby. In other words, he's saying that the faults trigger, uh, move their neighboring faults. They, they have an effect on their neighboring faults. Researchers were able to spot the creeping along the garlic fault using satellite radar imagery, which can detect movements in the earth from space. The satellites are sensitive enough that they can measure the tiniest amount of deformation in the ground. This is what Zachary Ross, lead author of the recent study, says. He explains that if the path that the radar takes is even slightly different, we can tell. And Ross said his team was surprised by their results. He said it's not really clear what this could mean. This was the first time that we have seen this happen. Both earthquakes and creep occur when tectonic plates slide 
side slide past each other along a fault. The difference is that creep is slow enough not to produce shaking. In some cases it can cause the land to bulge, which can damage buildings and infrastructure. But Alan said that's still preferable to an earthquake. Creep is our friend, he said. If a fault is creeping, that means there is less movement to be accommodated in an earthquake. Creep is relatively common among California faults, including the San Andreas Fault, which scientists have pinpointed as a likely source of the big one. In many cases, Alan said, creep reduces the strain on fault lines, but then again, it's absolutely possible that it could trigger an earthquake nearby. He said, we don't understand the physics of the process. Creep is relatively common among California faults. California has experienced a small spate of seismic activity in recent weeks, which can coincide with the 30th anniversary of the magnitude 6.9 Loma Prieta earthquake that damaged the Bay Bridge in uh, 1989. On Monday, the San Francisco Bay Area town of Pleasant Hill experienced a 4.5 magnitude earthquake, and that was strong enough to knock bottles from store shelves. And the following day, the town of Hollister got a 4.7 quake. Actually, that's in the area of um, the joining of the uh, Hayward Fault with the San Andreas Fault. Both the 4.5 and the 4.7 were actually on the uh, Hayward Fault. Now, Wendy Bowen, which is, of course, uh, parallel to the, west, to the east of San Andreas, now, Wendy Bohan, ge the geologist of the Incorporated Research Institutes for Seismology, says that these recent earthquakes are nothing to be overly concerned about. In fact, the Hollister earthquake occurred near the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault, she said. And it's always unusual to have two magnitude 4.5 earthquakes in one week in California. That's what Alan said. But the effect of the stress change caused by those two earthquakes is pretty minimal. Even if the earthquakes were to trigger more creeping, it would not necessarily spell disaster. The southern end of San Andreas has often started creeping in response to other earthquakes, Ross said. That has happened several times in the last decade, and he said that then it just stops creeping at some point. Instead of focusing on isolated quakes or bursts of minor seismic activity, most scientists agree that it's best to simply assume the big one could arrive any minute. Earthquakes, both large and small, are part of life in California, Bowen said, and it's up to all of us to be prepared. Now let's take a look at today's activity there together. What's going on? So here we're taking a look at the activity today. This is on Sizemo Berkeley, and uh, we can see that, let's pull out a little bit, just because we don't have the activity in Canada doesn't mean it's there. It's not there. It is there. It's just that USGS is not putting it up for some reason, even though it's putting up for other countries. It's not putting up for Canada. I have no idea why. But we do have, uh, if you extend your eyes and your imagination, this whole thing is active, just like Alaska and West Coast is, and also here as well. We had an earthquake yesterday. All right. That's around there in Quebec just north of Maine, and we had, to our surprise today, the blue is today's quakes, and the red is the past hour. All right, this is around um, uh, Salt and Sea, and this is around Ridgecrest right there, Thrills Valley, Ridgecrest, and that's Garlic Fault. But look at this. This is still ongoing in the Midwest. And also, of course, this is the New Madrid Seismic Zone. As we know, it should be called a Rift Valley. Uh, and if you look at the aerial of it, basically the rivers run up this way, up to, up to here. Then you have the lakes. It's part of the river. And then you have St. Lawrence Seaway going this way. Basically the river and lake system is part of the Rift Valley. And you have very old faults. You have the mountain chain there, the Appalachian Mountains. And you do have a number of volcanoes there. Now, Maine, for example, this is, uh, oh, St. St. Andrews, Canada. Okay, I thought it was, it's in Canada. All right. Um, I thought it was U.S., but anyway. Maine is only 200 miles from one uh, 
close to the other in the uh, I think neighboring uh, where is it New Hampshire uh, it in those 200 miles it has of, of uh, border to border it has five volcanoes four of them are in a 100 mile stretch that's in Maine alone um, New York okay these have not been felt but the one uh, the one up here has been felt uh, okay it's taking too long let's go back all right these are new ones I don't know if they've been felt the one that we had 1.3 yesterday was felt oh seven people felt it you see the thing is that these quakes here on the east coast um, the sediment is much more soft than it is on the west coast and they can feel it ten times more than uh, they would feel an earthquake on the west coast but anyway this is our activity here as you can see it's the most active area in the world we have a magma body the corridor runs here is here running like a Y shaped this is San Andreas fault this is the garlic fault this is the Walker Lane fault system here under the Sierra Nevada this is a not one fault it's a series of faults and it pushes into the Cascadia arc wanting to go north this way basically the, the if you said it goes into the Juan de Fuca plate um, and we we and this this is where you have the Long Valley Caldera Mammoth Lakes is Long Valley Caldera supervolcano that's been uh, jostled and jolted so has Yellowstone because uh, and the whole the whole fault line here going into Yellowstone that has picked up activity as has this whole area since the Ridgecrest earthquakes it's jolted everything uh, San Andreas fault Gardic fault and um, remember what we had a 6.2 quake north of Vancouver Island July 2nd and July 1st by the way was total eclipse of the Sun uh, July 2nd we had the 6.2 magnitude earthquake and uh, in 13 hours we have later we have the Ridgecrest 6.4 on July 4th that happened before something similar like that happened before in 2015 we had a 6.2 magnitude earthquake here north of Vancouver Island and 24 hours later we had a moderate size earthquake like 3.5 magnitude in Ridgecrest so what happens you know somehow there's a pressure point here and uh, it hit Ridgecrest just like it did in uh, 2015 and Vancouver Island by the way that's moving this way and that like as, as, if, it's a ship, as, as if it's a ship in the ocean moving this way and that way moving this way and that way Vancouver Island um, we have a crack two and a half two two thousand two hundred mile crack going from Vancouver Island through Seattle Washington through Yellowstone through and you can see part of it here that's a crack there going and ending in New Madrid seismic zone New Madrid Missouri that's two thousand two hundred miles and uh, we have another crack this way Mississippi River, you can go see it this way, go this way, this way, this way, and all the way up to St. Lawrence Seaway. That's the real foot, rich, rich, real foot rift zone. And the New Madrid geologists say should be called New Madrid, Rid, New Madrid Rift Valley because at one point it will crack and will become separated. It's this area here wants to fall southeast that's what the geologists say and this is I'm going to do a separate video on this these are today's quakes all along this eastern seaboard from Alabama all the way down to uh, New Brunswick amazing so I'll leave links below for you for this if you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight 
on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.